Many thanks for joining us. You're watching OBN Horn of Africa. Uh, this is uh, Talk to OBN Show, our weekly program. Today we'll be talking about Ethiopian national dialogue in the making. I joined by Professor Mesfan Aria, Commissioner of the Commission. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Only a few people know uh, about uh, Professor Mesfan Aria. Um, they don't really know that you are a high profile personality. Uh, you, you, you have been attending your studies in various universities abroad. And can you highlight us, or can you tell us a bit about your profile so as to understand who Professor Mesfan Aria is, who is assigned to chair this Ethiopian National Dialogue? Uh, I'm not a high profile individual, I'm very individual. I'm, uh, you know, <laughs> I consider myself uh, a low level individual, an ordinary Ethiopian uh, who joined uh, Haile Selassie University in the early 70s and then went to the former Soviet Union, now St. Petersburg, did my medical school there came back, uh, worked at different uh, places, including Tigray and Wollo. And then from there, I came, I joined the Manuel Psychiatric Hospital, uh, worked there for some years, and then went to the Netherlands, did my specialty training in psychiatry in the Netherlands in a place called Kroningen, came back and worked as a psychiatrist, did my PhD in uh, Umeå in Sweden, and then came back. So. I've been teaching and uh, working as a psychiatrist at both at Emmanuel and uh, uh, Black Lion Hospitals. At the same time, I was head of the Department of Psychiatry for many years and became uh, assistant associate eventually, uh, a full professor some time ago. So I'm mean, just an ordinary you know, physician, psychiatrist. And I was at some point uh, the chairperson of the National Elders Council. So as a National Elders Council member, I've traveled in extensively within the country, especially uh, within, you know, when the war, before the war broke out between uh, Tigray and uh, the federal government, between Tigray and Amara and Oromia, Somalia. So, you know, with elders, uh, I've learned a lot, uh, especially during the peace and reconciliation, you know, mission within the country. So just an ordinary person I happened to be here as a chief commissioner of the commission. So I'm still learning. I'm learning from the commissioners. Ethiopian House of People Representative established uh, Ethiopian National uh, Dialogue Commission by December 2021. And can you tell us about the nitty gritty of this commission? This commission was established by the proclamation of uh, 1265 slash uh, 2021 uh, according to the proclamation people nominated the nominees uh, seven, several thousands and from those several thousands uh, about 632 were shortlisted again from 632 75 uh, nominees were filtered and eventually in 42 and the 42 were discussed at the House of People's Representatives uh, by different stakeholders, religious leaders, politicians, or political party leaders, youth and the like. And from the 42, uh, 11 were selected. Again, you know, amongst the 11, there were a few people who owned you know, different uh, citizenship. So as a result, Another three were uh, selected from the 75 batch. So we are now uh, three, 11 commissioners, three female and eight male commissioners uh, from ages ranging like uh, from 40 to mid eighties. So uh, we have different backgrounds, different uh, capacities, and some are, you know, six of the 11 commissioners are lawyers, fortunately. I say fortunately because 
they will uh, definitely they will use their expertise in the future when we start uh, when we come to the dialogue proper so here we are 11 commissioners working for the last five months and uh, the, for the last five months was a time for uh, knowing each other studying the proclamation preparing the regulation as well as uh, you know preparing different pillars and working at different sectors so this commission the, the commission work has different pillars as i said earlier different chapters different uh, sectors and the first one is we call it an exploratory phase where you know established office know each other study the proclamation study uh, or, or benchmark and other studies done on dialogue or conducted on dialogue in different countries in the past why those dialogues succeeded or failed and the like so now we are into the second phase we're almost done with the exploratory phase now we are into the preparatory phase so the preparatory phase includes the identification of the potential participators in the, in the national dialogue agenda setting not the national dialogue proper so the agenda setting and we are into uh, identifying the potential facilitators as well as conveners because as you know as you might understand the dialogue involves two parties two parties two peaceful parties you know who want to sit together and discuss issues identified by those two parties and, and uh, discuss it and come up to the consensus so to do this they need a panelist they need a facilitator we call it in american away so those facilitators are very important the facilitators should be as neutral as possible so they will be elected by the same proclamation as we are elected as commissioners so the facilitator has to be neutral impartial and you know ready to 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 actively participate in the process so that is another process and the third is as this process is going to involve millions of people we have different stakeholders these stakeholders vary from the ordinary you know weaver or uh, housewife pastoralist farmer to you know to to the elites high up to the elites and uh, government representatives political representatives elders religious leaders and the like okay so we have been discussing we have been bringing all the stakeholders to our office and visiting them as well so we're trying to kind of you know uh, create awareness as well as bring potential stakeholders to to the process so that is what we call the preparatory phase so once we're done with the preparatory phase then we might move into the next phase which we'll discuss in due time all right your commission uh, has 11 commissioners and out of this uh, three of them are females and how do you compromise this gender imbalance though uh, <laughs> Fortunately, these three female commissioners are very strong, and all of them are lawyers, as I said earlier, because out of the six lawyers in the commission, we have three female lawyers, and all of them have uh, a significant you know, past uh, uh, experience in different areas, and two of them belong to the youth group. So uh, the fact that we have only three females in the commission will be very well compromised by the incoming experts female experts not only female experts experts will join us or will board you know the commission in due time from different stakeholders it could be from uh, the the society for the disabled it could be from the society from the youth and the like so different stakeholders you know who will be joining us and will be working with us for the next three years in the 
in the National Dialogue Commission. So the, the gender will definitely be, you know, uh, compensated with uh, incoming you know, high level experts from different uh, uh, social groups. The bill setting up the commission state that the commission is aspired to pave the way for pave the way for a national consensus and uh, uh, able to maintain integrity of the country. How do you genuinely tell as the practical implementation of this ambition in the future? Well, you know, the job, uh, we are the facilitators of the whole exercise. This, is, this exercise is going to be, it's a very new exercise to our country to Ethiopia, and it's maybe also a very new exercise probably to the whole world as well. Why? Because, you know, as we have seen, as we have studied other uh, dialogue processes in different countries in the world, you know, most agenda come from top down, whereas in our setting, in our program, the agenda comes from bottom up. So this makes it very unique. Bottom up means the people. The people, you know, will bring their own agenda. What are the agenda that hinder, you know, us to continue as, you know, as as a whole nation? So the agenda might vary from, you know, from 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 Kabale up to the federal level. So we are expecting that, you know, thousands of agenda will be will come to the fore and selected by the commission, the council of the commission, properly sifted and filtered, and then discussed at different levels. Those that, that are on the, the federal level will be discussed by the Ethiopian people at the federal level. Those you know, that, are, that can be discussed at the uh, at, at, at the regional level or at the zonal level will be discussed accordingly. So uh, our role is to facilitate the whole discussion and bring our people to consensus. Once the consensus is reached, and then the, the, the whole process will be, uh, that will be the implementation phase. So the whole process, the document will be submitted to the authorities to act on what, on the verdict of the people. So once it's acted, then the, our job is done. So our job is to see to it, to make sure that the, the people of our country are heard. So that's how, you know, we're kind of planning to go through the process, the dialogue process, which will be completed by the whole discussion, discussion conducted at different levels, from Orada to Zone, and then to region, eventually to the federal level. So once that is completed, then we'll go to the next phase called the follow-up of the implementation phase. So we're hoping that by the end of the year, the third year, that we and all of us will come to the consensus. Whenever there is no no consensus is reached, or when, whenever there is a deadlock, then then a decision will be made. Because according to the regulation, we are working on the regulation. What can be done once the deadlock is reached? Because we are not expecting that hundred percent consensus will will be reached. Well, that's very natural. So whenever there is a deadlock, so what next? Is it the referendum or some other process? So that's going to that's 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 something we're you know actively working on now. Okay. Uh, what have you done to execute procedural fairness and all inclusiveness in the making of this national dialogue so far? Uh, well, inclusivity is very important. So one of the principles, impartiality, and uh, we have uh, uh, many principles uh, depicted in the, in the proclamation. So uh, one of the main principles is inclusivity. 
So what do we mean by inclusivity? So the inclusivity goes down uh, if it is in the region to the Kabale and eventually to the goat level, even lower than the Warada, lower than the Kabale. So we believe that each, each population, segment of population should very well be represented because we're not focusing on the elite alone. We're not focusing on the governmental structure alone. We are focusing on the social structure as well. Let me give you an example. Ethiopia has some, something around 1,300 waradas and close to 90 zones. So each warada has different constituencies. What do you mean by constituency? If you follow the government uh, structure, then from the Warada and the Warada structure, you may have a youth, uh, women, and the like. But there are, you know, group of constituents that are not included in the government structural system. So means there are people who are very much marginalized and never heard of. So we're looking to those groups. As you know, Ethiopia has over 80 nationalities. So all the nationalities should be represented and should be heard as well. This also includes the marginalized group, whether it's uh, the handsmith or whether it's, uh, as I said earlier, the weaver or the clay maker, who are often you know, neglected. And so, and, and, and each constitution will have its own forum as well. Because, you know, the, the culture in our, in, our, in our system is that you call for a meeting. So when you, whenever you call for a meeting, it's only those who can be heard, you know, have the voice. So the, the, the so-called elites or the mini elites or the politicians, so to say. So we believe that, you know, every segment of the population should be heard. That's why this is going to be a huge task. So when we go down to the 1300 waradas, so that means we have to use you know huge number of uh, uh, facilitators. So to do so, we will use the, the local language, we'll use the youth, most probably the higher institutions, higher institution students, because these are believed to be somewhat neutral, because if you follow the government structure, then you might end up in, you know, in, 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 and lose the, the impartiality and the neutrality as well. So we know that we have to be careful according to the proclamation. We have to maintain our impartiality as well as neutrality. So to do so, then we'll have from 19, to 20,000, we call them madras, discussion groups. So that's a huge number. So with those madras or uh, uh, discussion groups, we might involve you know, close to two to, from two to 2.5 million population people. Well, you know, we cannot involve the whole population of Ethiopia, which is 120. But we have to make sure that we have to be representative and make sure that no, no group is left behind. That, that's what the proclamation says, and that's what we believe we should conduct. Okay. Uh, of course, this time, Ethiopia has uh, so many uh, burning issues and have uh, so many hot potatoes. But according to your commission, what are the very fundamental issues need to be uh, focused during this national dialogue. Have you sorted out those areas of discussion? No, no, that's not our mandate again. Because as I told you, during the agenda setting, the agenda should come from the people. Itself. So people should say it. People should say it loud. People should say, you know, this is our agenda, you know, to go to move forward. This, this is a, because Otherwise, you know, if we set agenda uh, uh, beforehand, then it's the same as, you know, bringing the agenda from top down. 
that's what happened in uh, in in, in uh, uh, dialogue processes elsewhere in, in the world. You know, if you take Yemen or Kenya, for instance, or Yemen or any other country for that matter, you know, mostly the agenda, you know, came from top down. And then there was this outside inter intervention. In Kenya's case, UN, and uh, Yemen's case, UN, and GCC, the Gulf countries. So, you know, it, it didn't move, you know, much further. But, but in our case, the agenda should come from the people itself. People should decide this is our agenda to move on. So our 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 our, uh, uh, our our job is to filter, you know, which agenda should be, you know, looked at which level. That's a, that's 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 our mandate, because you know, tons of agenda can come from from our people. When is when we say our people, uh, the stakeholders, as I told you earlier, are different. It should be the political parties. It could be the youth, organized youth, it could be in the religious uh, groups, et cetera, as well as, you know, ordinary people. So the, the agenda will be filtered and discussed, you know, accordingly. So we don't want to preempt or we don't want to suggest beforehand that, because, you know, this has already happened recently, a gentleman from, I don't know, from, from, from where suggested that, the commission should focus on, say, one, two, three, four, five, seven agenda. That's it. Why, should, why are they going to the, the ordinary people? Why are they going to the, the peasants, to the farmers, or to the pastoralists? The pastoralist, you know, has, has nothing to do, or the farmer has nothing to do with the, the national agenda. That's, that's absolutely false. False. Because, you know, people should, you know, should come up and, uh, talk, you know, their own problems, discuss their own problems, and come to the consensus. After all, it's the people, you know, who live together and have been living together for the last several millennia. So, you know, the elites, we elites came recently, you know, we are not even 50, 60 years old, but the people of Ethiopia have been there for the last several millennia. So they should decide, you know, on their own fate. So this, you know, this is the mandate given to the people not to not to the commission. Professor, prior to this um, new commission, uh, the government has uh, set up Peace and Reconciliation Commission in 2019, uh, right after this uh, incumbent administration took uh, power. But it was not successful by then. Have you learned from its shortcomings and from those voids of the previous Peace and Reconciliation Commission? Why oh, yes. it failed to be successful? Well, very much so, because uh, I myself uh, was on uh, the other commission, the, the, identity, the Boundary Identity and, uh, and uh, Administration Commission, and worked for three years. And, 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 and the peace, I know the peace, the peace and Reconciliation Commission as well. Uh, uh, well, as you might have realized by now, the Peace and Reconciliation Commission was kind of a part-time commission, A. And B, you know, uh, by the time it was preparing itself, you know, to launch its main activities, that, that was the time it was dissolved, already three years. By the same token, the, the, the Identity and Boundary Commission it has done a lot where I belonged and has already produced 3,850 pages document, which we probably will use, which will probably, you know, get, you know, those documents edited and uh, printed as a book and be used, you know, by the public and hiring institutions as well. So we have learned from those two commissions. Uh, we are a full-time co commissioners. Because the past commissioners were, you know, kind of okay. uh, part time, and uh, they met, you know, very infrequently. But uh, when it comes to our commission, we are here, you know, almost from seven to seven or from seven to nine. So our mandate is, you know, to see to it that this commission succeeds by the end of its tenure. At least it will lay a foundation for democracy by the end of its standing.
Okay, you, you, you've said that uh, this commission is all inclusive, uh, all regions in the country, but uh, still people are doubting about uh, the Tigray region because the warring function, function uh, TPLF uh, may resist to be embraced in this national dialogue. And what are you really working to embrace TPLF and Tigrayans in this agenda? Uh, our mandate is uh, to bring every party on board, every party, warring, peaceful, you know, otherwise on board, sit together, bring agenda, sit together, discuss, and come to the consensus. Because, you know, we have tried in all means so far. We have tried... Uh, weapons, the war, the conflict, and by the end, you know, we're, we're, we're losing day by day. We're losing the youth. We're losing our uh, resource. We're losing everything. And still, millions are, of people are displaced. I know what war means. And uh, the commissioners, you know, all the commissioners understand, you know, what war means. So what we're saying is any party, you know, who lay arm and comes to the fore and ready for discussion with a, its own agenda for discussion, are most welcome. That's our mandate. So if we have a green light, whether it's from uh, West Oromia or from Tigray, from anywhere, and a green light for uh, to join uh, the national dialogue, they're most welcome. So once we have the green light, the next thing we we'll do is, you know, to go to the parliament, parliament, and seek, you know, for you know the possible revocation of uh, the, 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 the 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 proclamation made earlier about uh, the warring parties. So that's our mandate. And we're still working on that as well, and we are still uh, calling, you know, for peaceful. Uh, decision to come for and abort and join the National Dialogue Commission. Some people claim that this National Dialogue uh, might polarize the ever-existing tension in a country and others say genuinely that it would resolve the ongoing uh, situation in Ethiopia. Where is your stand and can you mention as some countries uh, which are successful through the ushering uh, peace and reconciliation and hosting national consensus and bringing uh, national integrity. Can you mention some countries? Well, the no, there won't be any polarization here because when two parties come up together and say, hey, let's sit and discuss our issues. So by the end of their talk, definitely they will come up to some consensus. Even they don't agree, they'll continue, you know, to agree, you know, with their disagreement, to continue with their disagreement. So they can always, you know, agree to disagree. So once they come together, so well, yes, there are a few countries who are successful, especially. These countries are, you know, after the post-Soviet era, the, mostly these are European countries. That is one. And uh, when it comes to our uh, experience from our reading in Africa, you know, they had limited agenda to share the power and uh, power part, power sharing. That's what has happened in Tunisia to some extent. That's what has happened in Kenya. Because they had limited number of agenda in their discussion. At least, you know, they had uh, a peaceful, a peaceful closure. So when it comes to ours, you know, we had we have a very huge number of agenda. You know, that can take us back to fifty years or hundred years or even recently ten years, three years, four years. So I don't think there there will be any polarization from 
sitting together and discussing, you know, your own. Give us this brings you to the end of our edition for today. Due to the interest of time, I would like to wrap it up here. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.